Hello everyone and welcome back. In this lecture, we're going to download and set up Apache Spark. Here we Google Apache Spark. The first entry is the official Apache Spark website. Click on it. Click on Download. Select the Spark release you wish to download and click on the link. Click on the mirror URL to start the download. Let's go through the process of setting up Spark for both Linux and Windows machines. On Mac, you can follow the same steps as on Linux. If you have a Windows machine, you can skip ahead now. On Linux, Open up a terminal. First, let's create the folder where we are going to unzip Spark. Usually on Linux, software that don't come with a distribution should be stored under the OPT folder. So let's create a Apache Spark folder under OPT. Now, let's use the tar command to unzip Spark under the folder we've just created. Now that we have Spark installed, let's add the environment variables to make it easier to use Spark. First, go to the folder where you unzip Spark and copy the path. Next, let's edit the .bash rc file under the home folder to add the environment variables. If you have a Mac machine, you should add the .bash profile file instead. Now, let's add the spark home variable. Just type export spark home equals and paste the path you've just copied. At last, let's update our path variable to also include the Spark binaries. Just type path equals dollar sign path colon and dollar sign Spark home slash bin. Save this file and source it to apply the changes. Now we can check if Spark is set up correctly by starting a PySpark session. Just type PySpark and hit enter. We get a Python interpreter with a Spark session available. Don't worry about the warnings for now. If you're a Linux or a Mac user, you can skip now. On Windows, let's unzip the files we've just downloaded. For that, I'm using 7-zip. You can unzip whatever folder you want. I created an Apache Spark folder under the local disk, and I will unzip it there. First, unzip the file to get the tar file. Now, unzip the tar file into the folder you want. Running Spark on Windows is not different from other operating systems. But Hadoop has a problem with Windows NTFS file system. To be able to run Spark, download windows.exe from this URL. Create a new folder named Hadoop under the local disk. Inside this, Create another folder named bin and save it there. Let's add some environment variables to be able to run Spark. Right click on top of the Windows logo and go to System.
Now, click on Advanced System Settings. Then click on Environment Variables. First add Hadoop Home Variable. Click on New. Give your variable the name Hadoop Home. And the value should be the path to the Hadoop directory we've just created. Now let's add the Spark Home variable. Click on New again. Give your variable the name Spark Home. The value should be the path to the directory where Spark is. Now let's add the Hadoop binary and Spark binaries to the path variable. Click on the path variable and then on Edit. Click on New and add percentage Hadoop Home percentage slash bin. Click on New again and add percentage Spark Home percentage slash bin. Close the windows by clicking on OK. Before running Spark, we have to create a folder TMP under the local disk. Under TMP, create a new folder named Hive. Hadoop needs these folders to run correctly. Now open the command prompt and type winitals chmod777 and the path to the folder you've just created. This will set the appropriate permissions for Hadoop to use this folder. Now we can check if Spark is fed up correctly by starting a PySpark session. Just type PySpark and hit enter. We get a Python interpreter with a Spark session available. Don't worry about the warnings for now. Before we go, let's change the Spark log configuration. This will clean up the standard output for when we run our Spark programs. We will change the log level from info to error to make the standard output less noisy, making it easier to read the output of our Spark programs as Spark log a lot of stuff at info level. Go to the folder where Spark is and go to the conf folder. Now make a copy of the log4j.properties.template and rename it to log4j.properties. Open this file and go to the line that says set everything to be locked to the console. Change the following line log for j dot root category where it says info change it to error. With this, only error messages will be logged to the standard output. That's it for this lecture. See you next time.